This video is in partnership with Adobe Creative Cloud. Yeah, I know. I'm going to put it on him, I think. Put a little strap on you. <laughs> Not that right. kind of strap. Um, Shall I put some pasta on? Yes, please. I'm so hungry. God didn't grant me many smarts when it comes to practical endeavours. You're going to have your strap on soon. Hi. Today, I wrote a very long to-do list and a plan. It's helped so much. I went out today and I did six jobs on one trip. I'm impressed at myself. Things feel more manageable now. So yeah, basically nothing to report today other than I'm feeling better. More ready for the week ahead, moderately. <laughs> I'm sorry, it doesn't really make good content right now, but hopefully it will do. Hopefully you'll get like an emotional moment as we leave the house and maybe some fun packing clips. You are more than welcome. My photos just came back that I shot over the weekend and the weekend before at the various festivals I went to. And I wanna to put together not only an edit of the film photos themselves, but also pop them into a reel. I want to show you how I do it. I'm gonna make one of those cut out photo reels, which are quite popular right now. And I'm gonna be showing you the parts that I do with my Adobe apps. I've been using the Adobe Creative Cloud since I was in university when this was just a hobby. Even though I just primarily use Photoshop and Lightroom, there are so many apps in the Adobe Creative Cloud. If you make anything creatively digitally, you will know how many there are. Something else great about the Adobe Creative Cloud family is they've been building and introducing new things the entire time. So for example, Adobe Fonts now exists, which is so useful. <laughs> I use Adobe Fonts all the time. And obviously everything in the Creative Cloud integrates really effortlessly. Adobe Creative Cloud is currently offering students and teachers 65% off the first 12 months of their All Apps plan. And users can also access a seven day free trial. There'll be a QR code on screen where you can learn more and I will leave a link in the description. Okay, let me show you how we do this. This is my Lightroom app. I also use the Lightroom app for mobile as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is import my photos. One of the best things about using Creative Cloud is that everything is available across all platforms. So once I've put these into my Lightroom for desktop, they'll also appear in my Lightroom for mobile. There's this lovely photo of me and Josh. So I'm gonna to go to my presets and I've made my own Lightroom presets. You can get them on my site but I just open up the folder. I've made a lot of different ones that aren't even available yet because I just like playing with them and working out which ones suit which photos. Okay, so this is soft film. These are ones I designed specifically for 35mm film. Mood is one of my favorite. Soft seems to work really well with this actually. Dreamy is a bit bright, but I can always adjust it. I think soft's the way forwards. They just introduced this feature where you can adjust the amount of the preset, which is so nice as well because you used to have to go in and very individually tailor each setting which could be a bit complicated if you're a beginner but now you can just adjust the amount go for like 82 percent so i can go over here and copy the edit settings and then paste them onto all the photos that i would like to look the same i like everything in a particular carousel or photo set to look kind of homogenous so i do tend to copy and paste and then just adjust here and there in terms of just like brightness exposure contrast i just tweak them individually a bit photo to photo love it look how nice and soft that is now i'm just going to export this as a large jpeg this is how I try and be very organized. I'm not really. This is all a lie, guys, all a lie. <laughs> okay, now this photo is exported, I'll just quickly show you how I do the cutout in Photoshop. So I am currently using the eraser tool. This is me just magic erasing. There is no science to my approach. If I wanted to be a bit more careful, I might use magnetic lasso and then erase, or I might go around with the pen tool as well. But because of the way that this video, this reel is gonna be made, I don't need to be particularly careful with my cutouts. You can't really notice it that much. So I'm just 
gonna go quick on this one because there was a really obvious background. So I will export it as a PNG file, which makes the background still consistently transparent. I would naturally use Photoshop to cut something out like this because I just find it much easier than trying to do it on my phone with random apps. I know the Photoshop app, I understand it. It's my go-to. To make one of these cutout rules, you need the original photo and you need the cutout. So I'm gonna finish off doing the photos and the cutouts and then edit them into a reel. I'll show you what it's come out like. But yeah, if you're a student or a teacher, definitely go and check out Adobe Creative Cloud. Adobe is one of the tools I've used to turn my passion into a career and one that I still use on a regular basis. And if you're a beginner and don't know where to start, Adobe has free tutorials available for every level that help you learn at your own pace. That help you build skills and confidence. I will check back in, maybe later. Maybe tomorrow, who knows. As usual, I'm late to an event. Um, I've had some toast, gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. I used it solidly for two years, but it has been destroyed by this black breaking. I'm so sad to see it go. It's just the best colours for me. You know what? There's not much I can do around here that makes me feel of use. But in moments of doubt, I can vlog. I spent all of yesterday doing this office and it's not even done. Do you like that I'm holding it up here? Do I look like your 2015 fever dream? I'm actually doing all right. I'm just quite overwhelmed. Jack's doing a lot of the like manhandling work with one of his friends. They're taking everything down to the storage space. We've had to upgrade our storage space. This is the second upgrade we've done. You just forget how big furniture is, basically. But that's a nice angle, hope you're enjoying that. I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay. I, can I be honest with you? I'm not pooing very well. A little bit not quite right, but um, we move, you know? We literally move. Okay, I'm taking a quick break to show you what I've got tailored. There is nothing like a deadline to get things off your to-do list and tailoring two of these items I've had in my wardrobe for a really long time. I just hadn't got them done. This skirt is from Motel. It's still got the tag on, but I found it on Vinted. I, no, I found it on Depop, I found it on Depop. I wanted a skirt like this with a slit, just like a black mini skirt for autumn. I think they look great styled with like the suit jacket, a nice shirt, you know, all of that stuff. Or like a little t-shirt. There's loads of them on the high street right now. And so something I do when I want something on the high street is I will find the item that I want and then I will go to Depop and Vinted and search for that item. And sure enough, this is a skirt from Motel. It is still in stock, it's still available, but I know the quality of hotel items. I've bought many in my time. I don't want to buy it firsthand. And I know that other people experience that with the quality as well. And so they'll probably be reselling it. Sure enough, took me five minutes, found it online. And it's a terrible fit. I got it for a tenner, but it's like a bad fit. So I took it to the tailor and sure enough, it has been fixed up. It's not the most flattering thing in the world, but it does the job. And then I also got this top, which I bought. This is crocheted by someone called Loopy on Etsy. I wanted this like oversized boxy crochet top. So I had a look on Etsy. I know you should always buy crochet on Etsy. And 
it looked amazing. Got it, gorgeous. I'll link their store below. But the sleeves were too long for me and I had no idea how to take them up. Usually I'd do something like that myself if I could because it would just be a cut and stick kind of job. But this was crochet and I just didn't want to ruin it. So I took it to my tailor slash dry cleaner and she fixed it up for me. It doesn't really go with what I'm wearing, but yeah, it's just meant to be like a little crochet top. And now I can wear it for awesome. I need to pack a capsule wardrobe that will be seasonally effective. I asked for advice on Instagram. People told me layers. I will be taking that advice. Some people told me to look on Pinterest for inspiration because apparently some people do packing uh, advice. I have not done that. I've not had time. So we're just gonna go for it. Job number one is going through my underwear drawer. I cannot wait to have a proper underwear drawer when we move. I've just gone through an old chest of drawers and pulled this much old underwear out of it. I never clear out my underwear, I don't know about you, but this is all like five years old falling apart. I know, I don't even use it anymore. I don't even know where I brought it to this house. This is gonna be, it's just quick fire. My suitcase. Also my suitcase. But what makes these suitcases different? Okay, so what I'm thinking is we've got the bigger suitcase, that is where the majority of my portable wardrobe will go, and then seven days worth of clothes will go in my smaller suitcase. So the bigger suitcase has to be able to hold one or two jackets and a few pairs of shoes. I was gonna make a full video doing this whole process, but actually I don't think it's very good for my mental health. I really am not good with like, seeing my body on camera at the moment. When I asked Instagram for advice, one person suggested just pack all your favorite clothes and I think that's such a good idea. I have a lot of neutrals. I am gonna pack a mainly basic tops and bottoms kind of selection. And then in terms of everything else, it's just my favorite stuff. Probably gonna try and pack like 20 tops. So for example, a lot of little tops like this that I can layer. And I was told to roll things, so I'll keep rolling them. For layering, I'm also thinking stuff like this vest. I'm gonna drop this bigger suitcase off where we're cat sitting later today because it's not actually very far from our house as you might guess because we we cat sit there oh my god this won't be our flat anymore you know what it's actually quite validating to look at this room like i'm just looking at it on camera now and i i never liked this room and i don't like it any more or any less while it's full of stuff and completely chaotic and actually it's really validating to know that I wasn't just being a princess. This room is just not for me. I don't know why, the vibes are wrong. Trousers are actually gonna be relatively easy for me. So I'm definitely gonna keep these cargo pants that I'm wearing today. They have been a savior. Comfy trousers with elastic waistbands, who knew? And then I'm gonna take a smart pair of jeans. These are my new Egoldi jeans. I think that's how you say them. But these are like a smart pair of trousers. They are long line, high rise, straight fit. Oh wait, those were frame denim, sorry. These are the Egold ones or Egoldi. These are so comfy. I'm debating one of these 501 pairs. And that will be all the jeans because who wants to wear jeans all the time? Like they're not that versatile. I'm much better off with like a suit trouser, you know? I have noticed that I'm just so bad at packing for travel. And I think it's because I don't bring enough versatile stuff. Like I never, I never think to bring enough pairs of shoes, enough jackets, enough sweaters. Those are the things that I actually just end up overpacking tops and bottoms, whereas really, to make the outfits work, you need all the accessory bits. Anyway, I'm gonna keep on with this and stop chatting. <laughs> I'm just packing up all of the glassware, all the fragile stuff, which is generally booze glasses. And it is so weird. We've collected so many wine glasses and we don't even drink wine in the house anymore. Like these are little gin glasses. I still have like non-alcoholic gin tonics, but the wine glasses are kind of redundant. And yet here I am carefully packaging up each one. The madness.